Hi, I'm Melissa George with The Mindful Heart. Today, I'm going to tell you a few fables about foxes. In stories and fables all over the world, the fox is known as the trickster, and sometimes you'll hear him called Reynard. Most of the fables today are cautionary tales, but there's one where the tables are turned and the fox is outfoxed. Our first fable is called The Fox in the Well, and this one's by Aesop. A fox fell into a well, and he was holding on very hard to some roots on the side of it, just above the water. A wolf, who was passing by, saw him and said, Hello, Reynard. After all, you have fallen into a well. But not without purpose, and not without means of getting out, said the fox. Well, what do you mean, said the wolf. Why, said the fox, there is a drought all over the country now, and the water in the well is the only means of appeasing the thirst of the thousands of people who live in this neighborhood. They held a meeting, and they requested me to keep the water from going down lower. So I'm holding it up for the public good. And what will be your reward? asked the wolf. Well, they will give me a salary, said the fox, and they will save me the trouble of going about every day in quest of food, not to speak of innumerable other privileges that will be granted to me. And actually, I don't have to stay here all day. I've asked a friend of mine, to whom I have told the secret of holding up the water, to relieve me from time to time. Of course, he will also get a salary and have other privileges, and I expect him here shortly. Ah, Reynard, may I relieve you then? May I hope to get a salary and other privileges? You know what a sad lot is mine, especially in winter. Certainly said the fox, but you must go get a long rope that I may come up and let you down. So the wolf got a rope, and up came the fox, and down went the wolf. And when the former observed with a laugh, my dear sir, you may remain there until doomsday, or until the owner of the well throws up your carcass. And then the fox left the wolf in the well. Oh no, said the wolf, when it was too late. Greed hath its mead. And mead is an old word that means reward. The next fable is very short, but you might recognize it. It's called The Fox and the Grapes, and this one's also by Aesop. A fox, just at the time of harvest, snuck into a vineyard where the ripe sunny grapes were trellised way up high in a most tempting show. He made many a spring and jump after the luscious prize, but... Failing in all his attempts, he muttered as he walked away. Well, what does it matter? I didn't want those grapes anyway. Those grapes are sour. The next few fables are from India and are some of the oldest fables in the world. This one's called The Tiger, the Fox, and the Hunters. A fox was once caught in a trap. A hungry tiger saw him and said, So, you were here. Only on your account, said the fox in a whisper. How so, said the tiger. Why, you were just complaining that you could not get men to eat. So I got into this net today that you may have the men when they come and get me, said the fox. And then he gave a hint that if the tiger would wait a while in a thicket close by, he would point out the men to him. May I depend on your word, asked the tiger. Certainly, said the fox. And then the hunters came. And seeing the fox in the net, they said, So here you are. Only on your account, said the fox in a whisper. How so? asked the men. Why, you were just complaining that you could not get at the tiger that has been devouring your cattle. And I got into this net today that you may have him. And as I expected, he came to eat me up. And he is over in the yonder thicket, said the fox. And he gave a hint that if they would take him out of the trap, then he would point out the tiger. May we depend on your word? asked the men. Certainly, said the fox, while the men went with him in a circle to see that he did not escape. And then the fox said to the tiger and the men, Sir Tiger, here are the men. Gentlemen, here is the tiger. And the men turned to the tiger, and the fox beat a hasty retreat to the wood, saying, I have kept both my promises to you. Now you may settle it between yourselves. The tiger exclaimed when it was too late. 
Alas, what art uh, for a double part? That fox sure is tricky, isn't he? Okay, the next one is called The Fox and the Crabs. One day, a fox seated himself on a stone by a stream, and he cried aloud. The crabs in the holes around him came up and asked, Friend, why are you crying so loudly? Alas, said the fox, I have been turned out by my family from the woods, and I do not know what to do. But why were you turned out? asked the crabs in a tone of pity. Because, said the fox, sobbing, they said they should go out hunting tonight, and they should hunt crabs by the stream, and I said it would be a pity to eat such pretty little creatures. But where will you go now? asked the crabs. Wherever I can get work, said the fox, for I would not go again to my family, whatever happens. Then the crabs held a meeting and came to the conclusion that, as the fox had been thrown out by his family on their account, they could do nothing better than engage his services to defend them. So they told the fox of their plan, and he readily consented. And he spent the whole day amusing the crabs with all kinds of tricks. And then night came. The moon rose in full splendor, and the fox asked, Have you ever been out for a walk in the moonlight? <gasps> Never, friend, said the crabs. We are such little creatures that we are afraid of going far from our holes. Oh, never mind that, said the fox. Follow me. I can defend you against any foe. So the crabs followed him with pleasure. And on the way, the fox told them all kinds of delightful things, and he cheered them on most heartily. Having thus gone a great distance, they reached a plain where the fox came to a hill, and he made a low moan in the direction of an adjacent wood. Instantly, a number of foxes came out of the wood and joined their kinsmen, and all of them set at once about hunting the poor crabs who fled in all directions for their lives, but were soon caught and devoured. When the banquet was over, the foxes said to their friend, How great thy skill and cunning! And the heartless villain replied with a wink, My friends, there is cunning in cunning. That fox is a real bad guy, isn't he? The next fable is called The Fox and the Villagers. A fox that had long been the dread of the village poultry yard was one day found lying breathless in a field. The report that went abroad was after all, he had been caught and killed by someone. In a moment, everybody in the village came out to see the dead fox. The village rooster, with all his hens and his chicks, was also there to enjoy the sight. The fox then got up, and shaking off his sleepiness, he said, Oh, I ate a number of hens and chicks last night. That must have been why I slept in. The rooster counted his hens and chicks and found a number missing. Oh dear, he said, how did I not know of this? My dear sir, said the fox, as he retreated to the wood, it was last night that I had a good meal of your hens and chicks, yet you did not know of it. A moment ago they found me lying in a field, and you knew of it at once. Bad news travels fast. And finally, the last fable. The Hen and the Fox A fox, having crept into a hen house, looked up and down for something to eat, and at last he spied a hen sitting upon a perch so high that he could by no means come at her. And then he had to use an old strategy. Dear cousin, said he to her, how do you do? I heard that you were ill and kept at home, and I could not rest until I had come to see you. Pray, let me feel your pulse. Indeed, you do not look well at all. He was running on and on in this impudent manner, when the hen answered him from the roost. Truly, dear Reynard, you are in the right. I was seldom in more danger than I am now. Pray, excuse me coming down. I am sure to catch my death. The fox, finding himself foiled by the hen's cleverness, made off and tried his luck elsewhere. I hope you've enjoyed these fables about foxes and learned something new. I'm Melissa George with The Mindful Heart. <laughs>